What's, yeah. what's something important that your kind of political fellow travelers get really wrong uh, in your view? Animal rights. Animal rights. Okay. Like, yeah. uh, like maybe, maybe since I've already said that, you want me to yeah. do it for one? <laughs> well, yeah. uh, but I, but I, I do first want to say just like animal rights. I think this is a just a tremendous quantity of suffering that mm. a political movement that thinks of itself as concerned with suffering ignores, um, and not only ignores but kind of like mocks and yeah. dismisses. And uh, you know, a lot of people who think of themselves as good on all these issues, you know, you say, well, like, how about we don't torture so many chicks? They're like, oh, you crazy yeah. vegan and you. Yeah, like, I, I really well, I, I really don't like it. And I think it's a it's a way we teach ourselves to be less compassionate. Um, but I can give you another if you feel I've already. But let's let's let's, let's talk about animals for a, little, for a little bit longer. I've noticed that you um, that this is challenge for someone who's in a very influential and kind of kind of mainstream uh, position like you, where you have this view that kind of there's this ongoing just like moral atrocity all the time, something that you could be talking about with people, something that you are kind of disgusted by. Um, and it's maybe something that you should be like doing more advocacy on. You, you feel this pressure, I guess, or you feel like a, a pull to talk about it more because it's like astonishing that people don't uh, discuss it and that more people aren't on board. Um, but then you don't want to be ranting about that all the time and like giving up all of your influence because you're just regarded as the person who won't shut up about about veganism. Um, how do you? Is there like any kind of emotional tension that you that you feel with with, with this <laughs> on a kind of on a regular basis? I mean, yeah, uh, you could in some ways talk about nothing but this, as you say, yeah. but also there are a lot of other issues I do care about. It's not like I don't think climate change is important because I care about animal suffering. I care about human suffering, too. And I also I think there's a lot of linkages. My answer to this is that I do a lot of work on this issue. Um, yeah. It's a core thing of my podcast and has been for years. Um, it's part of why I, I really wanted Future Perfect to, to be created at Vox. I mean, I would say Vox, which I'm not there anymore. I don't think there is a mainstream publication that does as much to cover animal suffering as Vox, full yeah. stop. And it's something I'm incredibly proud of. And, you know, it, it's it's thanks to um, Dylan and, and, and Kelsey and Seagal and, and Albert, but it's also part of my legacy there. And it's something I'm really proud of. Uh, and so and now at the New York Times, like I think if you, you know, check back with me in a year, but I think you're going to see over the next year that this is not going to be an absent thread in my coverage. But but part of what I try to do here is that it is important to me to be persuasive. Mm. And, and this is something that I do think people miss a lot in politics. It is not I don't want to say like on some emotional level, like, of course, we all want to be seen as good people and whatever. I do not want my effect on this issue to be that people know I'm a vegan. That's not important to me. And it's not helpful to me really as a human being. Yeah. Um, what I want my legacy on this issue to be is that I um, I helped move policy in a positive direction, you know, particularly probably on clean meat funding, mm. uh, but but also moved people's thinking on this. 